Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, I've been down for a while. I uh, had to go in the hospital for a little bit. I had a real bad case of appendicitis and a tough surgery to get the appendix out. So uh, I've been in the hospital, uh, I think about two weeks ago for a few days. And I'm on light duty now, trying to get things finished up. So on my last video, uh, where I left off before I really had an attack uh, with appendicitis. Uh, we were cutting this gear on the lathe, if you remember. And I planned on showing you guys how that goes in, but some time got away from me, and uh, I've been resting for a bit, so I never got that video made. We are going to put that in the case today. I've got a case right here on the bench. Uh, I'm filming by myself today. I don't have anybody else around, so hopefully everything is in focus, and... Uh, just hang in there with me. We'll put this gear in and then I will show everybody uh, where their project is right now. I've got a few projects started and uh, I don't want people to think I'm uh, goofing off here. But uh, we'll take a walk around a little bit and look at some projects. But for right now, let's get this gear properly installed in the transfer case. Okay guys, when you get your kit you're gonna get your new shaft. This is your little spacer here. You got your bearings. And we got our cups. Let's see if you can see that. We got our cups in there nice and tight. You gotta be right on the money with your depth and uh, your diameter. Otherwise your cup isn't gonna work out. Um, <clears throat> so like I say, I, sh I showed you last time how to cut that. How to set up your uh, your pie dies to uh, to hold everything, and uh, we're just going to slip our bearings in there. We got one on each side, and you could put this in before or after you put the rest of your gears in. I like to put it in before because uh, it's just easier to to hold everything. Oops. Now one thing one thing I want to let you know is you don't use your you don't use your original thrust. Uh, washers in there. It's just your two bearings and you put that in and uh, let's go over this for a minute. When you tighten it down this is gonna this is gonna press up against your bearing and that's gonna give you, you, know, you put a nut out here, that's what's gonna give you your preload on the bearings. To stop the oil from coming out through there there's a little o-ring Take that O-ring and put it in the groove right there. Okay, and then that, that's going to slide over that perfectly. Okay, so um, <clears throat> they give you another O-ring. Uh, don't put an O-ring back here. Don't put an O-ring over here or anywhere else. Uh, you don't want an O-ring squeezing uh, because it'll just eventually get soft and you'll lose your preload. Get that guy in there. We'll start our shaft through there. Try and get you guys in a little bit closer. You see our shafts coming through. Okay, at this point. You're going to need to line up your flat with where your bolt and your plate goes. Uh, so we'll have to just turn that. Put it in a little too tight already. Okay, just want to get that lined up. Like that. And we'll spin around again. You can put this piece in at any time, and you can put it in there right now to guide it through. Uh, however you want to do it, it's uh, it's no big deal. That's a super precision piece, and it goes it goes in there nice. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll bang the shaft through.
Okay, now we're on the bearings. And if you did everything right, you'll have a little bit of slop back and forth. And let's see if we can get this guy in easily. Okay, we're going to just get a little small piece of pipe or a socket to uh, to get that guy to go in there. Um, and I'll be right back with you. Hang in there. Okay, we just got a socket. We're going to send that, that guy right in there. Okay, check to make sure we're moving all right. All right, now... Uh, you're going to get some instructions uh, when you get this from Advanced Adapters. Uh, they're kind of blurry, but they give you dimensions for what you need and they show you the basic assembly of it. <clears throat> when you start tightening this nut and washer up, they give you a washer, but I don't like the way it fits. And I got a different one. Uh, when you start pressing that in, that's going to give you your preload on your bearings. Now, right now, See if you can see that okay. Right now, just by banging that in, we took all the slop back and forth out of that and it still spins freely. We're going to put a tiny little bit of preload on that and uh, I'll show you a little bit about that. Um, when I got this kit, it didn't come with a nut or anything like that. They do drill it way out here. They do drill it way out here for a cotter pin, and I don't necessarily like the cotter pin setup because, as you can see, if you're there or there, that's quite a bit of difference in torque uh, that, you're, that you're tightening that and, and squeezing your bearings. You can use a elastic lock nut, <clears throat> and the one I like is the all metal lock nut. The edge is, is deformed here. That'll go on there. There'll be a washer. And um, this is the nut I like to use. I don't like that one. And this is another pretty good one. That's got the nylon. Um, that's got the nylon in there. And that'll work as well. But uh, I don't I don't care for the uh, the castle nut. So let me get the washer and uh, we'll tighten everything down. Just show you one thing on the back side. Okay, right here, you could take a tiny bit of RTV sealant and rub it right around there, push it in all the way, and we'll put our plate and our bolt there squeeze it in. It's such a good fit you shouldn't have an oil leak but it is possible to get a tiny bit of oil weeping out of there so we're gonna take a little bit of RTV and I'll show you when we do that. Okay guys took a little RTV ran it around there we got our lock strap started I'm just gonna bang this through the rest of the way And you can wipe this off now or you can let it dry. Uh, sometimes it comes off easier when it dries. Um, a lot of guys are trying to give you O-rings for that area. Uh, I, I don't suggest it. It won't actually go in the case. Uh, it'll get all torn up. And if it does actually get in there and sit up against here, uh, it's eventually going to lose its, its tension and... Uh, you'll lose your bearing setup. So a little bit of RTV is really all you need uh, if you're worried about leaks. And sometimes they can leak. If you're using thin oil and stuff that you shouldn't be using, uh, it could come out of there. Um, let me just clean that up for you. Okay, that's all the way in. We'll tighten this guy up a little bit. And then we'll move on to uh, 
setting the preload and too tight you're gonna burn up your bearings too loose it's gonna make a racket and be shucking around in there and you won't be able to shift good uh, it's critical you get this right I mean you go through all the trouble um, to get those bearings in there you want to make sure they're adjusted right okay uh, get you zoomed in there Okay, you'll see now because this this guy isn't all the way in. Um, can you see that? Uh, maybe something like that. That guy's not all the way in. They have a little back and forth. Okay, that's what we're going to take out with our washer and our nut. Okay, I've got my washer clipped, as you can see. And your transmission goes on there. You're gonna have your front cap of the transfer case here. It gets tight in there. Uh, I do like to clip the washer. And we've got our nut. That washer can be a nuisance, but try and get it lined up. Okay, you see we still got some, some movement back and forth. We're going to take that out with this particular setup. Okay, keep, just keep going until you get all your play out of there. Okay, we've got all our play out and it's still spinning. Just going to loosen that a little bit to show you what we don't want. Okay, see that's just kind of just free spinning like that. We, we, we've got no, there's just a tiny bit of play there. We don't want to have that. We want to put a little bit of bear, uh, bearing preload on there. So. We'll go nice and easy. Just keep checking it. Okay, we're just starting to get a tiny bit of drag on there. I think, I hope you can see that. It's not just kind of free spinning. Okay. Now we got all these slots in this nut. We're going to take, once we get all that and we're just starting to get drag on it. I want to take one, one nut flat or cut in there that you can see. And just get that guy that was over there right to the top. And you've got the perfect amount of preload. It still spins easy. Your bearings are preloaded. You've got no movement back and forth. see that okay okay it should easily easily turn by hand but not spin freely okay that's just the right amount of preload on those bearings um, like I say too much you're gonna burn them up and too little is gonna lead into a mess too uh, with the washer and this particular nut uh, we're, we're perfectly flush here and there's no sense in having the stick way out. We're, we're locked in good from here to here. And that nut won't move. We don't have to worry about a cotter pin lining up, make it, keeping it too loose, too tight. Um, that's perfect, right like that. Now this case, this is a big hole case. And <clears throat> this is going to get a, um, a GM uh, transmission, uh, the SM465. Uh, adapted to it and uh, uh, th this is for uh, for another build that it <clears throat> we haven't done too much on but um, 
since I was cutting the gear, I just wanted to show it to you um, so you'd feel comfortable if you had to do that at home. You know how much preload to put on those. Uh, I have gotten some of these in before where they're, you know, guys go through the trouble to put, to, to bore the gear, put the bearings in, and they don't adjust it right, and they mess everything up. So, uh, take your time, get a little bit of preload on there, and uh, and it'll be a, it'll 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 go for a long time. Um, much better than the roller bearings that are in there, and uh, it'll be quieter, uh, and and you'll really hear the difference when you're going down the road. So, I wanted to get that out to you. There was a few guys that asked how come the video never came out, but that's the installation of that, and. Uh, we're going to take a walk around now and, and, and show everybody the progress on their projects. Uh, like I say, I know I've been out for a little bit, but um, coming back stronger every day and getting more done. So let's take a little walk around and see what's going on. There's a uh, PTO gearbox uh, that I just finished rebuilding. Just took it all apart, new bearings, seals, everything. Uh, that's ready to go on another project that... Uh, we haven't done much with but um, the bench is full we're trying to get some things done uh, let's take a little walk around here's a transmission transfer case uh, front PTO uh, this is in for rebuild uh, Terry if you're watching this uh, I am starting on this uh, the overdrive should be here today. Uh, very tricky to get overdrives right now for some reason. Nobody has them in stock. But uh, I did get one for Terry, 29 tooth, going on this. Uh, popping out a second is a symptom on this. But uh, we'll get that squared away. I got all of Tom's paint right there waiting for that CJ5 body to get painted. Over on the bench, this is Tom's transmission transfer case uh, I just finished it today got to rebuild this PTO uh, this transmission was in horrible shape uh, water damage missing teeth on everything uh, new old stock first gear new old stock second gear new old stock synchronizer uh, very nice used um, input shaft and well, we can see down there it's hard to get in there I got a new old stock uh, cluster gear down there so this is going to be a fine transmission Tom uh, your overdrive has been located and found and is being shipped in uh, it's coming from the west coast so it'll be a few days um, I'm still looking for the overdrive to PTO adapter for you and uh, we'll be able to button this up so uh, I've got to put a few bearings in your PTO, and this is uh, this is just about finished up for you. Okay, Ken, if you're watching, this is your L head. It is completely finished up. Got your fuel pump on. Spark plugs are in there. I got the oil canister on that you gave me generators on. I've still got to put the distributor in uh, but this is ready to go into your Jeep. Uh, I just haven't been uh, feeling all that great as far as bending over and bending and getting under vehicles and this and that but uh, the engine is done and it came out very nice so uh, hopefully maybe by the end of the week if I'm feeling up to it I will get that in your vehicle and get it fired up. So, uh, I had a couple different guys on different occasions come over when I really was fresh out of the hospital. Uh, and they lifted the head on there for me and uh, helped me finish this up for you. So, um, things are happening and it won't be long before this is, uh, this is running in your Jeep. Okay, uh, this is Matt, Matt's project not Matt that you normally see here this is another Matt and I was able to get your brakes off and your front spindles and wheel bearings were a mess the brake shoes are bad the brake lines brake hoses 
uh, everything is kind of messed up but um, don't worry I've got some parts on order and we'll flush out the rear end and transmission transfer case this is a good running V6 from what I hear from what he tells me so we're not doing any motor work uh, I understand it's a good runner and we do have a body for it and uh, like I say I just want to let everybody know that stuff's happening on their projects and why I've been out of contact for a little while so uh, we'll continue to move on this as soon as the brake parts come in uh, I'm waiting on a dual reservoir master cylinder for you and I've got to get the steering box out get that rebuilt and uh, a bunch of other stuff but making progress on it uh, slowly but surely so hang in there Matt we're uh, we're gonna keep going on this okay guys here is a freshly rebuilt F head and you can see it's it's dressed out we've got the distributor in there uh, Protronics in a distributor Protronics coil and this is the engine there's a manifold and stuff. This is the engine that's going in the snowblower Jeep to power the snowblower unit. And I've just been picking away at this little by little and putting on all the little accessory pieces because um, they're not real heavy and I can lift them easily. So uh, this is uh, this is going to go in the bed and run the PTO. There's the PTO down there. It's a Rockford. And you saw me make the bell housing, which is sitting right there, and um, fit the PTO to it. And I was able to find a new clutch and some internal oil lines that I needed. So um, this is coming together pretty good. It's not a priority, but I was able to get a little bit done on it. Uh, as I say, you know. Uh, because everything was kind of light on there so um, I'm not picking up the PTO or the bell housing just yet that can wait but uh, there's a shot of the completed F head and I'll show you what that's going to look like when it's in its container and everything okay a while ago uh, Matt little Matt that you see around here filming and stuff showed me a uh, a power plant brochure that he had and it was pretty interesting uh, so I was been digging through my stuff and I found this didn't even know I had it and what's nice about this is it goes over the Jeep L and F head and I have to build this housing and there's a real nice shot of how it opens and how they laid it out in here and that's going to help me quite a bit um, there's another shot down there and they give all kinds of dimensions um, which won't work for me I mean the back of the engine uh, is an SAE 5 and Jeep always used an SAE 5 bell housing but I had to go to a 4 um, due to the the horsepower and everything in the snowblower so uh, my clutch is a SAE 4 that right there is SAE 5 but um, this is mainly what I'm after is is the container here. I've got to I've got to put a lot of louvers in there and stuff and rounded edges and, and the whole cart and the way they mounted it. You can see pretty good there. I think how they mounted the engine. So and, and where they put the battery. And there's the back of it. You can see the fuel where the fuel comes out. So this brochure is going to be real helpful because it actually gives dimensions of the container uh, and uh, that's what I'm gonna work on next like I say that's not a priority that's just kind of like rainy day stuff and when I have free time uh, I'll, I'll get that built but um, that's a handy brochure and uh, we're gaining on it we're, we're making progress not super fast but uh, uh, it's been busy with engine rebuilds and transmission transfer case rebuilds so uh, Got to get the paying jobs done first. But uh, we've got one more project to look at, and uh, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, hang in there with me. Okay, guys, we're outside, and 
the fans are in the paint booth right now. I got them covered. Uh, um, I still got to close in the sides here and stuff, but they are wired. I've just got to strap up the wires and stuff. And the electrical panel is in. And this is where our final project is. Hang in there with me. Okay, we got some lights on. Okay, all our intake filters are in. And Tom's body is here. Uh, now I have it out here. It's not exactly ready for paint. It still needs to be ground and sandblasted. Um, but I just can't lift up those 100 pound bags of sand just yet. So uh, we have this in here. Still on the rotisserie. I'll blast it on the rotisserie. Uh, but all the metal work is done. And I still have to get my exhaust boxes in. I see I've got some wire mesh in there that'll hold the filter from getting sucked through. But um, this is the key. I've got all the sealing work done. Um, uh, oh, looks like we got some company. Okay, guys, sorry for the delay. Uh, that was my guy I'm getting some cows from, some beef cows. And we're getting ready for those. I just got to get uh, a little bit of fencing up and stuff like that. And uh, they'll be here at the end of the month. But like I say, uh, Tom, it won't be long. As soon as I can get those bags picked up and get that sand blasted, I will be painting this. It shouldn't be too much longer. Uh, I got to go back to, <clears throat> back to the doctor uh, the end of the month. And uh, he's got to check me out. I'm having some... Uh, some trouble lifting stuff, but uh, I don't want to bust any stitches or or do anything like that. So as soon as I can lift this up, um, lift the bags up, we'll be sandblasting and priming. Okay hey guys, one last project. This is a 1986 CJ7 and uh, this is something I've been looking for for a while and this is a true barn find. Been sitting for the past 15 years. Floors are super solid. They always rust out in this area. Rear floor is in real good shape. Uh, very surprising to to get a nice body like this and kind of tight in here but try and show you some things rear floor is solid it's dirty and grimy <clears throat> it's got some weird wheels on it frame is immaculate oh, we got the Dana 44 factory rear uh, 86 they they changed from the AMC 20 and they started putting the 44 in again that has the 44 we've got the model 300 transfer case and the T176 4 speed uh, I really like that T176 at some point in its life I don't know what happened but they put uh, factory original parts on here you see the hood is a different color And I'll try and get this open for you. That's the worst spot right there, that windshield frame. But here's the six. Power steering. Original jack is in there. Very clean inner fenders. Looks like a fresh distributor cap on there. Um, Hopefully in the next couple days, if I have time, I will uh, check this out, see if I can get it running, and check the condition of it. 
but it appears to be a nice untouched original and that's always a good thing so we're gonna go through this one uh, make it a driver it's been a long time since I had a 7 and I've been wanting a 86 for a long time and uh, this one came along dash pad isn't even cracked so it's grimy original seats and stuff they got some holes and driver's seats got some holes in it back seats in nice shape but um, I don't know how many CJ7 fans I have out there but uh, we'll be doing a little bit of work on this one um, set it up with some brakes uh, probably some gears and lockers things like that just for uh, a nice sturdy driver um, and I'll show you I know there's a lot of chatter out there about uh, lubricants for this particular year Jeep and I'll show you what to use for that and like I say hopefully this will be running in a couple days and I will show you how the first startup goes so that's about all I have for you today uh, just trying to ease back into things and here is Ken's Jeep that the motor is going in uh, if you remember a while ago I painted this body for him and uh, now we just got to get the motor in there get it fired up put the radiator in and uh, send him on his way so it shouldn't be long and there is the J20 that I've got some work to do on so there's plenty to do uh, a lot going on around the shop it's quite busy but um, stick around and uh, I'll show you the projects as they happen okay thanks for watching everybody I will catch you on the next video